A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, June 11, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I will provide a brief update on the forecast associated with the possible development of a low-pressure system, either in the Western Caribbean Sea or in the waters of the Eastern Pacific, which could have some chance of development later this week. Furthermore, in this video, I would like to discuss several tropical waves that will be emerging from Africa over the next few days. Some weather models indicate that these tropical waves may remain active as they move west-northwestward in the tropical Atlantic over the next 7 to 10 days. However, please remember that climatology tells us that this region is not favorable for cyclone development during the month of June. Cyclonic activity tends to concentrate over the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Caribbean, and the region east and southeast of the United States. Therefore, in the second half of the video, we will be looking at some models and the conditions in the tropical Atlantic to see if there is any possibility of cyclonic development toward the end of June. It is also important to mention that the National Hurricane Center currently does not have any marked areas of concern for cyclone development over the next seven days. So, we are simply monitoring the forecast evolution and trying to identify which area we should be watchful of in the coming weeks. Let's start by providing an update on the possible development of the Central American Gyre. Remember that yesterday, I recorded a video providing details about this phenomenon. If you're interested, you can watch the video available on my YouTube channel. In comparison to yesterday's forecast, there are no significant changes. We continue with the GFS model, which shows some type of cyclonic development during the upcoming weekend. However, it is the only model that indicates this development in the Western Caribbean region, and currently, the other models do not agree with this idea. Therefore, this forecast is not very reliable. Keep in mind that the GFS model tends to have biases in developing systems early in the season, and most of the time, this development does not occur. We will also be keeping an eye on the area in the eastern Pacific, especially south of Guatemala and southern Mexico, as conditions here could also lead to the development of a low-pressure system that may encounter marginally favorable conditions for development as it moves west-northwestward. For now, it should remain far from the Mexican coast. When we look at the ensemble members of the European model, we can see a signal in the eastern Pacific region that possibly conditions could lead to the development of at least a tropical depression. However, note that the conditions favor a west-northwestward trajectory, away from the Mexican area. I believe that the National Hurricane Center will mark this area as an area of interest for cyclonic development over the next two to three days, and I will be attentive in case there are any drastic changes in this forecast. On the other hand, note that in the Western Caribbean region, the ensemble members of the European model show few of them developing a low-pressure system and keeping it extremely weak. Therefore, the ensemble members of the European model actually do not show development in this area over the next seven days. On the other hand, we have the GFS model, which, like the European model, indicates that the eastern Pacific region may possibly see the first cyclone development of this season, but with a trajectory towards the west-northwest, far from Central America and the Mexican region. However, similar to the operational model, Note that the majority of the GFS model members do show the development of a low-pressure system that could acquire cyclonic organization during the upcoming weekend. So, we will be watchful. Although, it is the only model that shows this development, and until the other models align with this idea, we should not be concerned about the GFS forecast. I will be attentive to the evolution of the GFS model runs and especially to the other models in case they also show any development over the next few days. Now let's talk about the tropical Atlantic region, where we will be monitoring several strong tropical waves that will be emerging from Africa. These tropical waves can be observed in the satellite image, where we currently have several tropical waves over Africa that will move into the waters of the Atlantic. I also want you to note in yellow or orange color, which represents the Sahara dust. Currently, the Sahara dust remains below normal levels, as can be seen in the following graph, where the Sahara dust in the tropical Atlantic is at extremely low levels for this time. This means that, at least for now, the presence of Sahara dust in the tropical Atlantic region is almost non-existent, and this can be a factor that helps these tropical waves move and remain stronger over the tropical Atlantic. The low presence of Sahara dust has also contributed to the warming of the waters in the tropical Atlantic, which are currently at record values for this time. Remember that we have been discussing the potential influence this could have on the cyclonic activity in 2023. If you want to learn more about this topic, search for a video I recorded on my YouTube channel. Another factor that has contributed to the warming of the waters in the tropical Atlantic is that the Atlantic high pressure has been positioned further south than normal in recent days, reducing the trade winds that move across the tropical Atlantic. This reduction in evaporation, and therefore, the increase in water temperatures. So, 
These warm waters can also provide energy for these tropical waves that will emerge during this week to remain quite active as they move westward toward the Caribbean. On the other hand, I wanted to mention that currently, and as is typical for this time of year, the conditions are not favorable for cyclonic development in this Atlantic region. This is also related to a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, which maintains descending air in the atmosphere over the Atlantic, hindering the formation of showers and low-pressure systems. This can be seen represented by the yellow and orange colors over the Atlantic Ocean Basin. Under these conditions, it is very difficult to see cyclonic development. However, this situation could be changing during the last weeks of June. It is expected that a Madden-Julian oscillation will move across the Atlantic by mid to late month, and after it moves through this area, we may have better conditions for development towards the end of June. This can also be seen in the graph, where by the end of June and early July, conditions would be more favorable for cyclonic formation especially in the eastern Pacific region and perhaps with some strong tropical waves moving across the tropical Atlantic. It is crucial to note that currently, the models do not show significant development of any of these tropical waves. However, some of them indicate the presence of strong tropical waves. For example, the German model shows two strong tropical waves moving quite far south over the tropical Atlantic during the upcoming weekend, but it does not indicate the development of a cyclone. Similarly, the European model, in some runs, maintains one or two strong tropical waves moving westward but also does not develop a tropical depression in this area. Likewise, the UK model has one or two active tropical waves moving across the tropical Atlantic, but currently does not show cyclonic development. In general, we can say that conditions are still not favorable for cyclonic development in this region, and historically, we do not see much development in this area. However, due to the exceptionally warm ocean temperatures and the very low presence of Sahara dust for this time, we will remain attentive in case we see a system that is slightly stronger than usual in this area. The ensemble members of the GFS model also show some of them developing a low-pressure system, but they keep it extremely weak as it moves westward. Similarly, the European model's ensemble members show a low-pressure system with some tropical waves, but currently, there is no cyclonic development. Therefore, in general, over the next 7 to 10 days, we will be watchful of the eastern Pacific region, the western Caribbean, and the area between the Caribbean and Africa. However, please note that the probabilities of development, at least in the Caribbean, remain below 15%. For the Eastern Pacific, the probabilities are slightly higher, ranging from 30% to 35%. That's why I believe this area will be marked by the National Hurricane Center in the coming days. However, at the moment, it does not appear to pose a risk to Mexico or Central America. Regarding the tropical Atlantic region, we can see that there is only a 5% to 10% chance of tropical depression development. This percentage remains low, but it does indicate that we will have some strong tropical waves emerging from Africa that we will be monitoring. However, we know that the climatology does not favor cyclone formation in this area. Well, that's all for now. Everyone can remain calm as there is no immediate risk, and we will have many days to monitor any areas of interest that may arise towards the end of June. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then, click on the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new content. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time.